Okay, time to report some results. Uh, first, quick review of my testing methodology. I start out with graph oil, and then I uh, put clear shipping tape on it for strength because it, graph oil, the kind I have, rips, rips very easily, and the kids can easily rip it. So I, I put that on it, and I end up with about 100 millimeter by 49 millimeter strips. I paint those strips with uh, the carbon that I'm going to use, and then I uh, build a sandwich. I start off with another hunk of uh, tape, and then I build a sandwich of the graph oil, and then the separator with the electrolyte, and then the other graph oil strip, and then I put more tape, and I put tapes on the side to make a, a reasonably uh, watertight not completely uh, watertight, but it, it's fine for a couple days, uh, package. Then I take some stiffeners that I printed on my 3D printer, and I put them on either side, and I pop on a couple of clamps, and I have a battery to test. Um, so, for this experiment, I had a bunch of batteries to test, so I was glad to have my little tester set up. And here is the little tester set up. I was using. It has my tester box that I built myself. Um, I have the videos on how to do that. And then I have the uh, uh, this switch on the tester box changes from charge up to uh, discharge down. So uh, I charge the uh, battery for a length of time. This is a voltage converter. It has uh, up down. I can change the voltage. It reports the amperage being uh, delivered. This is a, a thing when I'm discharging. It shows me the voltage and amperage on that. This connects to the battery, two wires. This connects to the load. So to change to a different battery, I just do two, two clips, boom, got a different battery. Two clips, boom, got a different battery. So it's very nice. For load right now, I'm using this little motor. I like it because the uh, feed the propeller gives me a nice little bit of feedback, and that's very visual with the kids, and so I like that because it's something happening. Up until now, I, my batteries haven't been strong enough to use a uh, EBD uh, USB plus uh, meter or data logger on it, but that's changing, and I'm looking forward to it. So for this test. I was trying to see how the different carbons would do uh, different lengths of time in the microwave oven. So all of the carbons used the same um, mixture. It was uh, five grams sugar, five grams salt, one gram urea, and two grams of graphite powder. Though the graphite powder is really interesting because I believe it's creating a, a sparking right there inside of the mixture that is incredibly hot. And so I have had issues with cups breaking, but boy, I'm getting some wonderful heat right where I want it and right conversion. So for this test, I had a bunch of batteries. I had seven different batteries to test because I tested it in different ways. I took the mixture, put them into my ceramic mugs, and I tested, uh, First, I tested the mixture where I would turn off the microwave right when the, uh, it started to smoke. Next, I tested the mixture where I turned off the microwave right after it stopped smoking. And finally, I tested the mixture at a um, time of 13 minutes where it had stopped smoking and then I kept going for quite a while. And then one last test I did where I, uh, if you look at the previous video, I was trying to uh, video the sparking that happens inside the microwave a mixture and I blew up a glass plate in the, a glass bowl in the process and so I, I tested that mixture just for fun which was uh, so the smoking started uh, at about 27 seconds so that was my quickest one is 27 seconds and then boom I would turn it off the smoking stopped at 3 minutes 43 seconds 
So that was, I ended up with a couple of mixtures at 3 minutes, 43 seconds. And then I had a couple at 13. And I had the one at, uh, the one mixture, I only had a little bit of the powder at um, the glass, from the glassware. So that was actually kind of a little bit longer than just the turning it off when it stops sparking, or stop smoking, but not as long as the 13 minutes. Now, my results, my results. The first, the, uh, just by feel, the 27 second carbon was not done, if you will. It had gooey caramel-like stuff, probably caramel, it's sugar, uh, around some of the edges that I wasn't, didn't even include because it wasn't really able to be ground up into a powder. The uh, one after the microwave soft smoking was a silky, beautiful uh, light foam. Uh, and it, it just felt really nice. It just had a really good silky feel to it. And then the 13 minute foam was the lightest of the foams. It had a pretty good feel, but it was, it, it was a very lightweight, uh, the lightest of the foams. Uh, I took the powder out of the, the cups. I ground it up in a coffee grinder and then I rinsed it out using distilled water. Um, distilled water is probably not as good as uh, official deionized water, but it's close and it's a whole lot cheaper. I will probably at some point get a deionized water maker, but I don't have that yet. The way I filtered the water, the way I filtered the carbons, was to put it in a coffee maker and I poured six cups of hot uh, distilled water through it through a coffee filter. Then I dried the coffee filter, scraped off the dust, and that gave me the dried carbons. So the results in terms of time. Now I had, for this round of batteries, I didn't have the uh, tracing paper separator, which I think works a little bit better. I was just using normal copy paper, normal you know, Xerox copy paper uh, stuff and it worked fine. It worked fine, but my times might not be quite as long. What I found was the 27 second timing was by far the shortest. The, the batteries did not work as well. The 3 minutes 43 seconds, turning it over right after it stopped smoking, was pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Um, and then the 13 minute was a little bit better. Now the 13 minute carbons broke the cups. The 3 minute 43 seconds ones did not. I think what's happening is it's a difference between making a carbon, carbonization, and graphitization, where you're turning it into more of a structured carbon and an activated carbon. Uh, there are, I've read various papers about activating carbons with microwave. So I think that's what's happening with the full 13 minutes. I don't think I need to go quite that long. And in fact, I may be going too long. Some papers have indicated that if you go too long, then you start getting a, a, a drop off. So I still need to dial in exactly how long to, to process these carbons for and what heat to process these carbons for. But I, it's a good set of results where um, at the three minutes, 43 seconds, with a five minute charge, I was getting about a, uh, um, a six minute or so uh, result, six minutes of running the, the little uh, propeller. At a 13 minute, I was getting about a seven minute, uh, 743 type result. I also tried charging it only for 30 seconds and I was getting for the shorter one, I got about a, a four minute result, uh, three minutes, 55 seconds. Uh, result on the uh, 3 minutes 43 seconds of cooking. On the 13 minutes of cooking for a 30 second charge, I got 5 minutes and 29 seconds. So for a shorter charge, it worked really well. And indeed, with my setup, I'm starting to be able to tell, uh, watching the, ch the amperage as it charges, hey, this is going to be a good carbon because it's taking a long time for that amperage to go down. It's absorbing a lot of the current. And then as discharging, I'm seeing the voltages stay higher longer. And that's really exciting. I'm getting to the point where I'm almost 
feeling like I have something to contribute to the community. Because that's my goal. I want to make a community or be part of the community. Uh, people messing around and experimenting with batteries to see if we can't come up with something really nice and really good. So those are my results. Uh, I used the microwave only. I did not use a kiln. Got good results, good carbons. Um, broke a couple of uh, uh, mugs, but that's fine. They're, I'm getting them at the dollar store, so they're dollar each. It's not a big, big issue. But, you know, I don't want to break them. I want to find out, dial it in and tune it so I don't, have, don't break anything. Uh, and good results. So the, the bottom line is turning it off right when the powder happens, right when the smoke starts happening, wasn't good for me. It, it didn't cook it all the way through. Turning it when the smoke stopped, it was cooked all the way through, a nice little powder, and giving it even more time gave it a, a better graphitization and a better performing carbon. So, thank you very much. I'm going to make another video, I think, today that uh, talks about my next steps and where I'm going from here. So, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.